The Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter, and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Welcome to the Weekend Podcast. I'm joined by Peter, not Steve, not Paddy. Oh, it's a terrible show mm. this morning, Pete, isn't it? But thanks, thanks yeah, for you know, thanks for stand, standing loyal there. And just, yeah, uh, you know. yeah, you can rely on me. I mean, we did have co- a communication with Steve last night. I mean, yep. I think Steve just set one of those Instagram accounts where people show their food, because Steve's <laughs> would be very good, I think. Like, <laughs> yes, last week it was the main topic of conversation on the on the podcast here, which uh, he had about three meals in one, and yet during yep. the podcast, but he says, "Finish mm. now." <laughs> <laughs> And then last night he came in and basically did a, a drunken freezer uh, rampage, rampage yep. uh, scavenge, where he had like a massive, it's like a double tin of beans and some frozen onion rings or something, frozen chips, all frozen. He obviously come in and um, he just posted that. But he should do that. He should share that with the wider world, I think. They're missing out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Colouring the uh, and, and you said straight away, somebody's been up for some drinkies. He said, maybe. <laughs> and then um, he, said, he said, just remember to cook it, cook it before you eat it, Steve. Because <laughs> literally it's mostly frozen. Yeah. And, uh, and then you posted that thing about Theranos, that Elizabeth no. Holmes. That was odd, isn't she? The way she changed yeah. her voice. We're going I know. Um, Worth looking at that documentary, Theranos. Um, yeah, DFS. Uh, drunk freezer scavenge. And Steve said, uh, takeaways, we're way too long delivery. I said, what? <laughs> Literally, it, that sounded, I thought, I, I said, what, Chinese takeaway? Because the way he texted that, that's in Chinese English, isn't it? <laughs> Takeaways yeah. were way too long for delivery. So what are you talking about? Uh, anyway, so, uh, yes, yeah, so he's been, uh, and then he added something else. What was that? Mr. Brown's original oh, Jamaican-style yeah. fish and meat curry seasoning. He said, uh, as a fail-safe, I have this. <laughs> a fail-safe? <laughs> what is a, I don't understand a fail-safe. No. What, do you just put that on top of it, does it, or what, to make it taste like, because it's froze, freezing, uh, frozen food is tasteless, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I said, how is that a fail-safe? <laughs> I don't I quite understand. <laughs> a, a bag of powder is a fail-safe. Yeah, uh, yeah and they said, I'm, curry powder. They said, I'm quiet drunk. Quiet drunk? Okay, that's good. I like a quiet yeah. drunk. I don't like loud drunks. That's good. Oh, no, that's good. Uh, so anyway, Steve uh, said, I may not be able to make it. So, uh, he's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's true to form. I, he hasn't made it. It, it. it struck me, he's like a 40-year-old student, isn't he? Yeah, he he's is, like, yeah. <laughs> he's out hammered, eating random frozen food at 11 o'clock on a Friday night, uh, and then, yeah, not yeah. not uh, sticking to commitments on a Saturday morning. Fair play, yeah. you know, last week he did try to create something, create a spag bowl, and uh, but he had dirty was it pepperoni fries, and then he had uh, you know, a big yeah. entire foot-long sort of... Uh, was it uh, garlic bread? bread. Yes, yeah, lovely. <laughs> Doesn't like the ends though. Oh, I don't like the ends. And then, uh, but this week, just oh, we just got from the freezer and beans, and then <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Brown's thing is yeah. a failsafe. Did you see also on the edge of the photo? There's hummus. <laughs> yeah, he's been tucking into that. In the in the, uh, in the meantime, <laughs> yeah. I'm too yeah. hungry. And take away too long. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you know yesterday I had two texts right within seconds of each other? Notifications from the BBC. The first right. one. Right, was announcing Neil Parrish, MP, has been suspended. I thought, oh, I was actually interviewing a company. Uh, when I popped up, I thought, oh, that's gutting because that's revealed his name. And before I, we didn't know his name. This guy apparently investigated for porn. I don't know how it came yes. about. He said it was an accident. He said he. he <laughs> so, well, you know, I don't know. How is it an accident? You, you won't click uh, on. Yeah. Even uh, my, my father probably you know, clicks on the odd link if he's on a. that he shouldn't be. You know, if someone sends it, he wouldn't understand the difference between spam and. But this guy's an MP, in, you know, he yeah. runs a select committee as well. I assume he's quite au fait with technology, isn't he? Um, anyways, yeah. his wife said it's very embarrassing. <laughs> very embarrassing. <laughs> I can imagine <laughs> it is, actually. But that popped up. I thought, that's gutting. You know, BBC just takes that out there. And then within a second, right, followed by news that former Wimbledon champion Boris Becker has been jailed. I bet Neil Paris mm. is thinking, yes, well done, Boris. You've taken the heat off me a little bit. Yes, <laughs> Boris, get in there. Because literally, he went from headline news at Neil Paris, number one, to Boris, yeah. you know, usurped him, took him out. I thought, brilliant. Oh, thank you, Boris. 
And uh, I thought, I'd been never so, so pleased to see Boris, you know, losing court ever, you know? Well, not such a yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of court, not uh, Senate court. Of course. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah. but, um, that, uh, but um, he said the whip removed from him, Neil. Uh, doubly gutting, because he enjoyed that. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, and Boris enjoyed that yeah, yeah. as well, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that Boris, odd with Boris, though? He, he, he just hid his money. Mm. He, apparently, uh, yeah. he said, he, did he say he was advised of that or something? No, he didn't have any money. <laughs> Come on, pay your <laughs> ta- taxes, I have the money. <laughs> what do you mean? You're, see, the BBC, yeah. you're on the BBC every, every week, you've won things. I know. No, I have no money skinned. Come on, no. Boris. I do no. it for free. <laughs> yeah, I do yeah. it for free because I, I like tennis. I do it for charity. <laughs> I got just... no money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Turn into turn into what's his name? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, sorry, he's not in Borat or Boris. Sorry, Borat. I slipped into Borat there for a second. <laughs> it's Borat Be- Becker. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, um, Borat Becker. Anyway, right. It is catching um, though. But uh, I that was ca- a shock. Yeah, that yeah. was a bit mad. Bit. A yeah, couple yeah. of bad, bad bits in the news, really, yeah. Quite Money, mad. see, is a downfall, isn't it? And I think about, yeah. and I think about that with the, the markets a little bit, you know, bringing it round. Uh, I, I do nice. think if, if you are looking at money all the time and your value of your portfolio all the time, you're going to panic, you know? It's, it's, sometimes you, you've got to treat it, stand off, get a bit zen about it, stand back, just observe. You know, just observe the markets. That's what you should be doing. We are cyclical. I, I did say at uh, recess, listen, if you're the kind of person who can't hold a business on the dip, you're not going to hold it on a rally. Because it's all about emotion, no, you know? No. You, no. And in fact, once they come, you start, people find this. If they have emotion. I've seen a couple of people actually recently on social media who, you know, been uh, sort of in micro cap stocks for a long time, just say that, uh, that's it, no more micro caps. That's it. I'm out. What they understand yeah. is the entire market is going down anyway. Yeah. But that kind of, you know, capricious is just jumping in and out of like that. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Yeah, everyone's back in. Oh, no, no. Thing is, you will not be able to hold a company if it starts to rally, and it's on a long-term rally because you won't think it's a long-term rally, and you're a trader's mentality of short-term gains or short-term losses. So you just jump in and out. So you have to have that mentality, of not looking at the share price too much. Just look at the business. I mean, did you see last night yeah. that, um, the S and P 500, which is the big one really in America. That's the one you. I mean, obviously Dow is industrials and all that stuff. The S and P 500 is the you know the biggest indices out there all the big boys in it that started to roll over last night it's, it broke support level at um, if okay. it on the chart they did tweet it out but uh, but if you look at it just realise again that you can draw a line on a chart you know and it breaks that line where's it at so, so, so it's uh, pretty much 4100 4160 <clears throat> and, uh, or 4200 it's tested that about three times and it's now broken down just below it um, but what does it actually mean it's like, there's just 500 stocks. They've all gone down lower. So what? You know, if you look at that and get panic, if you're a trader, oh, it's broken support. Sell your yeah. house. Sell your pants and knickers. Sell your bed spread. Everything. Sell your food in the cupboards. <laughs> Run. Get a tin hat on. Run down the street naked. <laughs> if you do that, right? Yeah. Well. You're never going to hold any good businesses. They're, they're, these are businesses underlying this. Yes, they're having a sell-off, but yeah. that makes the valuation more compelling. American markets need this for a while. If you look at the S and P 500, it's like the chart has gone berserk since um, since the, da- the dash for cash crash in 2020. It's just gone up upwards. You know, American stocks have gone nuts. UK stocks are not so overvalued, but American stocks are nuts, and mm-hmm. um, they need it. They need it because they're overvalued. You know, it's good for the market. This a sell off is good. So ignore your portfolio values. You know, all that. It's good for the market. Good for it. <laughs> Just tell yourself that and go out for a yeah, walk. Yeah, yeah, but it needs it, doesn't it? I mean, it, it, yeah, yeah. As we all know, the markets are cyclical. Why is it then, if we know that, the markets are cyclical, that everyone sort of thinks it's the end of the earth every time there's a sell-off, don't they? If you uh, see, it seems that way. CNBC but it's hard and all to... that, you know? It's like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, well, media, mainstream media just enjoy the stories, don't they? So, uh, But for uh, the thing that gets me is it's hard to know how much is it like private investors panicking and selling? How much is it sort of bigger institutional mm. kind of investors covering their backsides? Yeah. Um, uh, I, you know, so it's difficult to know, isn't it? But yeah, it, it does. It's frustrating, isn't it, as a private investor, because you see it go down. But like you say, you've got to think about the business and think about what you're investing in and look further down the line. But it's easier said than done for some people, perhaps, and they panic and they sell. But um, yeah, I, I, but yes, but. 
It's it's odd because you really, CNBC they always have these guys and their traders or, or you know well, they, they call themselves investors and they all give these reasonable valuations but they're in and out of stocks all the time. I think what, what is mm. what's, what's the, I mean it's odd, isn't it? One of the most successful investors of all time. You know you've got a model there to follow and it, it does it. Yeah. So Warren Buffett is don't worry. In fact, you read any books and um, some of the best long term investors. So you know if they have time again. They, they, would, they just ignore all the macro noise. They just keep regularly investing yeah. in good businesses. And when it dips, you buy more of it. It's a good business. Yep. Is it going to? Is the business going to be? You know, and in fact, <clears throat> Henry Van Effie uh, texted me this week saying, "Would you sell the banks here now?" And I said, "I don't, <laughs> right. I don't, I don't hold any banks." And he said, yeah, "But would you? Though? And I said, you know, if you held some now, would you sell?" I said, "I advise anyone not to sell in a bear market. Yeah. That's simple. That's selling at the bottom." And it comes back to that phrase, isn't it? Age old adage, you know. Uh, you know, buy low, sell high, not the other way around. And we are low no. now. Now, if you're selling now, you're selling at the low. You're doing the exact opposite of what you should be. Now, that's quite an easy phrase to understand, isn't it? Buy low, sell high. Where are we at the moment? Yeah. Are we high or low? We're low. Okay, we shouldn't be selling now. <laughs> All right, okay, okay. I've got some. That's, that phrase confused me. Um, yes, because, uh, because why is that phrase confusing for people? Yeah. It just comes I, well, emotion, the, emotion it, isn't it, really? Yeah. But I mean, it's not that... No, they forget that phrase, don't they? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, Buy low, sell I, I forgot that. Just, yeah, just, just stick with that. You can, <laughs> you can make money in the market just by sticking with that. If, historically, look at, look at the levels we're at now. It's, um, you know, most stocks, especially microcaps, are low. They're, you know, historically low, most of them. They're below their 52 week averages and um, sort of yeah. highs and all that stuff. They are low, you know? But that, that's why, I mean, I, I don't know how much is it down to private investors panicking mm. or how much is it, you know, bigger stuff. And uh, are the majority of private investors sitting tight? You know, I certainly am. And I saw you put a poll out in, on Twitter this week about how many oh, trades yes, you've had. Oh, yes, good. That's next, actually. Yes, yes. Yeah, so that was an interesting. I mean, let's go through the results. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, in total, how many buys and sells have you made this week? Uh, the options are none, one to five, six to ten, more than ten. So uh, on Thursday you put this, out, not Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's right. Yes, uh, mm. more than ten was two point three percent. So it's quite low. And of course, it, yeah, Twitter's a bit of an echo chamber, I suppose. So people follow me, 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 be investors rather than traders. But but uh, six to ten, three point eight percent. One to five, thirty-one point seven percent. No trades at all. Sixty-two point one percent. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And, and of course, there's a bit of manipulation. Market makers will mark stocks down if it's a big sell-off because they have to. They, you know, they they make money on the margin, so they you know they really mark it down, and uh, hoping that um, they can make a bit a bit of uh, margin on the way up. But this this will always happen. If you look at Nasdaq, look, more than forty-five percent of stocks down fifty percent. Yeah. More than 22 stocks down 75%. More than five stocks down 90%. Uh, the only comparisons are October 2000, uh, October 2, and November 2008. Uh, 2008. Yeah. So, so if you look at those levels, those levels there, all right? I mean, the, the, again, if you look at the S&P, it's a bit skewed because you've got Apple and Microsoft pretty much holding it up. Yeah. Uh, even Amazon dropped like 13% yesterday. Um, right. yeah. Which for, you know, for a trillion dollar market cap, thirteen percent is yeah, a big yeah, chunk of change. A, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. You know, Bezos is probably not worrying though too much, you know. No, um, but your that poll it'd be interesting to do that poll over a longer time frame, like this year. So the year to date, we've f- f- done four months. Uh, how many trades have you done? Brought you? I mean, I, I can I can count. I think I've done one or two or something. I don't think I've done many at yeah, all. Because some people can't do it. Counting up, can they? I don't know. I've lost count. No, like, no, uh, no. But you could do all right. But you could do yeah, not to 10, 10 not yeah. to 10, yeah. 10 to 30, more than 30, or something like that. But it'd be interesting because I think, well, I don't know. I, I think my gut feeling would be that it's a similar pattern. A lot of people aren't doing much, a lot of private investors aren't doing much, I would think, because yeah. it's a bear market. Yeah, good. Well, I mean, I think, I think it's a good time to be, you know. Topping up if you've got spare cash on companies that, like I said, you know, you know full well the business is doing well. They're going to grow this year, and um, you know they're good value. I mean, this is the time, and I'm not. not to, do you know what? It's funny. I, I, I do a month. I'm trying to do a monthly podcast now with Fred and Monty on the big mm. stocks in, in America. We did one this week, um, and uh, Monty sold his Snapchat because I said to them, uh. Uh, "Yeah, I said, what stocks do you think would be around?" Not only be around, but hopefully still doing well in 20 years' time. Think of that time frame. And it's hard to do because, you know, tech changes very quickly and the market changes very quickly. But of the stocks you have there, what companies do you think will be around in 20 years' time? 
And with that time frame in mind, you start to sort of have a good filter. And they said, oh, Snapchat. And they said, um, Fred, and Fred said, maybe, but not many people will be using it. So it'll probably die then. Yeah. Okay. Well, you should consider selling that. So Monty told that. Um, he, he bought Berkshire Hathaway because <laughs> I had to explain him what it is. <laughs> I said, that's Warren Buffett. So he said, he said mm. okay. He said, but what does he do? I said, he invests in companies, pretty much. He buys companies. He said, okay, I have that. And I went, out, I went on a list of big companies on the thing. He said, um, I said, Philip Morris. I said, Philip Morris, he does cigarettes. <laughs> Monty <laughs> wanted to buy Philip Morris. I said, the cigarettes, yep. Monty. Yes, yes, that's what I want. I said, that's what I want. He said, why? The kids, lots of kids are smoking. I said, they're not. It's gone. <laughs> I said, it's gone downhill. He said, yeah, and I Fred, am, Dad. <laughs> yeah, and Fred, and Fred said, yeah, but there's a lot of people vaping stuff now. In our school, people are vaping. I said, um, okay, but they do vape stuff. They've got, and, 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 you know, even British American tobacco. I said, do, do you want to go into that? But lo- oddly, Philip Morris, very stable share price compared to a lot of others. Because, mm-hmm. of course, there's fags, isn't it? People think, you know, if you look at it, it's almost anti-recessionary. You know, anti-inflationary because no matter what you do, you're always going to have smokers. New, you know, in, in the in the far east as well, bigger population out there, still a lot mm. of smokers. You know, and you know it's like saying, "It's my only." You know, let me. I, remember, I, I don't know what it was. I talked to Rush Mould actually. I remember seeing um, a, a comedy years ago, sketch comedy on TV, and this grandmother from a fag, and literally she started coughing her lungs up for three minutes, and her grandson said, "Nan, why don't you give up? Give up, son. It's any pleasure I've got." <laughs> and that's it. You know, coffee your lungs out. It's the only pleasure I've got. <laughs> there are people like that, and they will never ever give up. And uh, you think it's it's not like you'll cut back if, if it, the price has got a little bit. You're not like you cut back. It's, it's price price inelastic. People just buy them anyway. They're addicted, you know. So um, yeah. anyway, Spe- speaking speaking of pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Martin's joined. Hello, Steve. Oh, he sounds fresh and bushy tailed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, actually, I've, I, I'm not. Uh, I, I've been on the show for about five minutes, actually. So, uh, right. I, just, uh, um, I, um, I have a work at nine o'clock. So, really? well, okay. thanks, Steve. Thanks for coming. Let us know. I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> turn up to work late, right? Yeah. I say, oh, by the way, I got half a day booked in. Yeah. Oh, I got to shoot off for a dental appointment. Yeah. So, oh, Fine, do- do- dock it for my salary. Yeah. Thanks yeah. to you. Uh, How was your meal, like, Steve? Steve? No, but people listening to this podcast could be listening at any time, so nine o'clock is re- irrelevant to them, isn't it? It's nine o'clock in ten minutes' time, or 30 yeah, yeah, yeah. minutes' time. We don't know. OK, where well, are you off, Steve, today, fella? And where did you go, um, more importantly, where did you go last night? You came in, mm. you know, like I said, you know, you did a um, drunken freezer sort of scavenge. What happened there? Uh, I just went for a few beers. I say after work, I didn't do any work yesterday, so um, I just went for a few beers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't do the work. You're trying to validate it, it by us. It was hard just, Friday, day. just Friday drinking. Yeah, and a hard day. After work, I cut a beers. You know, I have to work for a couple of beers. Actually, it didn't go to work. I just went for We beers. skipped the work bit. Straight yeah. to the beers. Um, yeah. How was your meal, Steve? I see you, oh, I see you I'm, 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 I'm looking at it right now, actually, the leftovers of it. It's not looking very nice this morning. Yeah. I, I, but so I'm saying, Steve, you should um, maybe set up an Instagram account just for your meals, Steve's meals. I think yeah. they're quite good. Just take a picture because they're, they're, they're quite random. I, and I, I think I think that's called rate my plate. I think it's already out there. Yeah, but it's, no, but it's more personal, Steve's meals, because yours are like a, of a, of a mm. single man. Sometimes you, you would go for you know you try and prepare something nice for yourself. The next time that you got that frozen food scattered all over your you know kitchen well, top there. Yeah. You, in fact, you see you're so so. Starving, you tuck it into the hummus halfway through. <laughs> take I know. away, that, take away, went along. I, I was waiting for the uh, for the food to cook, and I was eating hummus and crisps, and that kind of filled me up a little bit before, yeah. by the time my food cooked. Yeah, um, well, we said uh, I, what I didn't understand. So just going back to it. Yeah, take away, it's way too long, too long, way too long delivery. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, what are you? Um, what is Mr. Brown's as a backup? What's a fail, a fail safe? How does that work? Oh, yeah, I forgot I sent you that. Um, um, a friend bought me it. It's a, a Jamaican-style rub for fish and meat. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm going to experiment and try that out. Well, well, I did, so, <laughs> how, how was that really in relation to what you were cooking last night? Did you, did no. you I, don't, I don't I was drunk. I don't know what I was doing. No, God, this is a fail-safe. <laughs> God, this is a fail-safe. <laughs> What? Oh, thank God for that, Steve. Oh, we were very <laughs> worried there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, just one other thing. So, so it's, it's, it's you know the, the American stocks are rolling over. It's only Apple and Amazon. Anyway, talk to my sons about investing. 
But what I say is, I know this, right? We're going to put in twenty pound of pretty much a month. Uh, use the free trade app because there's no dealing costs. Because otherwise, mm. that'd be you know prohibitive, really dealing costs on top of that. Because it's twenty quid a month. I know full well over the fullness of time, if we do this in a couple of years, they'll be up because they're averaging in, you know, dollar cost averaging, as they call it. But I mean, you know, they're averaging in over a long period of time. And that's the way you should invest, you know, chuck a little bit in once a month in a good business and a guarantee yeah, yeah. you'll be up in a, one, or two, one or two years because you'll be averaging down here when the share prices are down. You'll be up. That's the way to do it. Not just jump all in, jump all out. Oh, markets are going down, sell. Okay, I'll sell. Let's go down even further. I'll oh, sell again then. Sell, sell. Well, that's what happens. Until you've got the P of well, Brigade, stop selling. <clears throat> uh, yeah. When the rally happens, the, 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 what happens is, oh, the market's rallying. Buy. Oh, buy. Oh, you're going up. Yeah. Oh, buy. We're buying higher. We did this. We sold you. Just buy. And then all of a sudden, the, oh, no, it's not. It's rolling over. Sell. <laughs> it's like a bloody hell. On a roller coaster, do you jump out just after it goes over the top there, goes down there? Do you jump out or do you wait for the right to end? Or do you wait for the next? Jump out, quit, it's going down the hill. <laughs> Let's go back up, jump back in. <laughs> the thing I challenge with that is just that, that time frame thing you say, oh, in a couple of years. Because, you, you know, that's the thing, isn't it? it, it you've got to have a bigger, uh, wider view of things because you don't know. But I agree, in the long term, you'll be up. Yeah, but yeah. What, how long that long term is, we don't know. And that's, I think, where people fall down. You said, in two years' time, I'd be up. Well, oh, I've had people later. like that. So I've had, right, like, exactly. Like, God bless me. So, so give it to the end of the year, you know. Um, I was 2021, and of course, it hasn't recovered. But if you look yeah. across all the stats, all the bear markets we've ever had, right, the average is 18 months. And now, yeah. so... I mean, microcaps have been there now for over eight months. So, uh, and and that eighteen months, by the way, is from the the peak to trough to recovering. So, you know, we are at the bottom probably, and now we're going to start sort of. And I think microcaps in in UK especially, touch wood, mm-hmm. I think have hit a bottom, and they're now going to retest maybe, and then right back up, retest a higher low probably. So, but. You know, so so what is that's that's the way markets work. Why do everyone put their pants when the markets sell off? <laughs> the the term is American markets on CNBC especially. They're so panicky because they've never had really big dips since. You know, it's gone up since pretty much since the Great Financial Crash, apart from the dash and a couple of wobbles in between. Mm. But they've never had a sustained sell off because of all the fake money pumped into the system. You know, and bond buying program. It's like they, they've really messed up. Or what's the word? But I, uh, I, don't, I don't know. You think of that word. Um, I, the only thing I'd say, yeah, okay, eighteen months, whatever. But you know, there's always uh, there's always a chance there'll be it'll be different. You know, so it might be twenty four months this time, or thirty six months, or whatever. You know, and I, I think back to when the dash for cash happened, and we look back at over a previous big drop, big recessions, all the way back to nineteen twenty, whatever. You know, and you kind of go, oh, it went lower nine months later, and actually that. Dash for cash then bucked the trend, didn't it? Because it, it didn't go lower. It, it, the dash for cash was the low point, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, yeah. And then, then it kind of rose, it came back a little bit, but it never went lower than the dash for cash. Whereas historically, if you'd relied on the history books, you'd have gone, oh no, it's going to go lower in about nine months' time. Yeah, or top. V shaped recoveries. Yeah, no, V shaped recoveries. Well, that, that's because, of course, the, the, the Fed and all that announced a huge uh, Well, but that's what I'm saying. You can't... And, and market every- distortion, that's what I'm saying. So this is, they've, they've, they've Just let the markets do what they need to do. That's, what that's the trouble, you see. The central banks mess around, pumping... It's almost like saying, you know... It is, if you look at steroids, it's, it's almost like pumping steroids in the mind. Now, if, you, you know, if you're a, a, a person, a human, and you want to improve your performance, you know... Eat well. We all know how it should be done. <clears throat> Exercise well, you know, and eat healthy foods. And then if you start using drugs to enhance that performance, it's not going to end up well if you start relying on those drugs, you know. And that's mm. what the markets have done in America. They've relied on that stimulus and the pumping. It's distorted the market. And well, what, yeah, and okay, they, but you know, that, you've got to factor that. In. That's what I'm saying. You yeah, can't the, the, predict yeah. And, oh, 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 but hold on, like, the, the world is in an odd place at the moment who knows what's going to happen in the coming months let alone years and then also you know when does covid mark two come along you know does that come along this year or or something let's hope not but it might and so the 18 month thing you know for me it's like now i'm looking five years down the line yeah, you know you should yeah that's it that's it well, if, in our space, in any it'll, space be, it'll be even lower yeah yeah <laughs> no. No, no, no 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 the thing is the markets are pricing in you know fed hikes basically and they're yeah. with, withdrawing money so that's happening right now so people have to understand that the market when you know when you can see events coming up the market will price it in you know because people start to go oh yeah. so 
of course, black swan events, you can't see left field events that happen mm. that you don't see. Obviously, you get the market can't price that in. But as far as it can, it will do. So there, there's pricing in, I think, eight rate hikes and a reduction in the bond buying progress. Doing that right now. You know? So it's called a market correction because the market corrects. Because, of course, with interest rates going up, companies with debt, it'll affect their bottom line because they have to pay. You know, that debt becomes more expensive. They can't. Can't grow as fast. They'll take on less people. So the, the Fed are having to slow down, and the, and the you know Bank of England they're having to slow down the economy. Now it's a very fine line between slowing down the economy and creating a recession. But recession is not the end of the world. So you need that, you know. And then you know full well what comes after that is an immense bull market run for like five, ten years, probably on average five years. So you get so sell offs in there that happen, and you get eighteen months, two years of you know down and sideways. And then you've got a five-year rally. So right now, I'm quite excited. It, it, it won't last for long. I mean, once uh, there's been evidence shown, once the Fed st- actually starts tightening, the market settle down a bit because um, you have guidance. But they have to do that, of course, to bring the inflation down. And you don't want rampant inflation. And again, it's a, it's a, it's a, in my mind, right, the target rate, interest rate, is 2, 2%. The inflation is uh, also about like that. So you know, why don't you just leave it? Just don't mess around. What do you mean I see a central bank do nothing? Right? Just leave interest rates at 2% and aim for like inflation at 2% with that if you can. But just, and just stop messing around with it. Stop just, it's, like, it's like little kids doing an experiment, just poking the frog all the time. Just do not keep poking the frog. You know, what are you doing? Just let him, it's all putting a little a mouse in a maze, you know, and you just poke the mouse all the time. Stop poking the mouse or picking him up and chucking him something else. Just leave it. You're not, you know, it's not an experiment. Just let the economy do what it needs to do. Sometimes you have to have attrition. Sometimes businesses have to go through. What happens is, when you pump false money in and distort the market, you are supporting zombie businesses that shouldn't be around, you know? And so it'll be, it'll be a bigger fall in the end. But, uh, yeah, but inflation... You know, the cure for inflation is inflation. That's it. High prices, sorts it out. And then, uh, you know, people tighten their belt, don't they? They don't buy as much, and uh, the economy slows. Stock markets go down, valuations become more attractive. All of a sudden, ooh, they're looking a bit of a bargain now, and people come back in. It's fine, that's the way it works. Yeah. Um, that's why it's important, you know, if you're investing right now, so look at value and growth, both. I mean, Buffett said, you know, no such thing as a growth stock or a value stock. When, you, when people's uh, Kathy Wood's ARK Investment Fund, if it's worth looking at Kathy Wood if you don't know who she is. Um, mm. She did superbly well, you know, uh, just out of um, Dash for Cash crash because all high growth stocks went berserk. And that's her fund. She has all of them. So her. Uh, 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 um, Didn't you interview her? No, 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 no. She's, uh, she's, uh. she's quite big. The thing is, Kathy Wood, if you look at her now, her performance is dreadful, but yet she's you know she's earning a lot of money. Oh, Why do people do that? Because they're talkers and they, people believe them. She knows no no more about. She's talking about oh the stocks are in, in well it's, they're deinflationary because they're and they're just tech and they're they they be they create societies that are more productive so inflation doesn't go. So anyway, her flagship Arc Innovation Fund is headed for its worst ever month in April. It goes from oh, bad yes, to her. worse. Yeah, yeah, one time so. so uh, d- so the ETF is down 26% this month, right? Now, I looked in my mm. portfolio, it's like 28% down for the year. Hers is down that this month. Now, that's not only... that wow. It did that in January pretty much as well. It has declined 70% from its high in 2021. So in a year, it's done 70% fall. And she's managing money professionally, you know? And she's all in these... A mega sort of uh, super, you know, I, I, stocks that had at the h- a height of their peak, they're on like you know, 50 times, 100 times sales, you know, not even earnings, sales. So you're thinking, and yet she was justifying that, you know, you can't justify that. It's ridiculous. Absolutely. And, and, and it was it Zoom now and Teladoc. Tele, Teladoc took a massive tumble uh, just recently, but in all those, she was, she was in Tesla, I think she's got out of. But um, it's funny, isn't it? Elon Musk sold four billion shares in Tesla this week. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, but mm. so it's not. I mean, when you think of it, if you watched a, a couple of videos on Warren Buffett, what you have the sense of is he's got a lot of common sense, and he does not veer away. He does not go to, from from one extreme to the other. He's just consistent, you know. And that's it. It's consistency and moderation. Uh, and he says, there's nothing, 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 there's noth
simple as you know you don't yeah, want one yeah. you don't want one with the other because you've got a valuation stock good value stock it's not growing it's going to continue to be a good value stock because it, it's not going to grow you know it'll be, always be a bargain but essentially it's not growing now if you're going to grow stock without any valuation then it's going to crash sooner or later because um you know it's 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 got no valuation or basis or fundamental basis so that all stocks should have growth and value simple as that and so of course you're going to miss out on the on the high flies that go up crazy and go go down crazy that's not what you want, is it? If you're a fund manager, you don't want that kind of uh, volatility. You want a bit of sta- stability for your people investing you. The more I look at it, the more I think, there's so many bullshit artists out there managing lots of money, you know, for people. But they're just bullshit. Absolute bullshit, mm. they, you know? Just lie to people. Um, so even Trump, you see Trump on that Piers Morgan this week? He's a liar, isn't he? He's, a, he's an obvious liar. <clears throat> Why yeah. are people believing that? Why can't they just see through yeah. that? It seems to be quite obvious he's a liar. You are a liar. It's like I, yeah. I said. Uh, Piers Morgan asked about the nuclear threat from Putin and um, and she. Uh, or you know, he said. I said to them, I said, if you do this, I will. Our response will be so strong, bigger than any other response that's ever happened. Biggest in the world. It will be so strong. And he said to me, really, really. And the president, she said exactly the same, same thing. I said to him, response will be so strong. He said, really? <laughs> so she <laughs> yeah. and Putin said exactly the same. Well, really? Yeah. Yes, I would. And, they, and, and so... Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's like he is like a child, isn't he? Because he's he, and he's sort of like, yeah, Putin wouldn't have invaded while I was in power. He's like, yeah, that's yeah. he didn't. So you can say that now. No, yeah, that's me. No, it was because I was that. You know, no, that's nothing to do with you. <laughs> yeah, 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 but the thing is, the odd thing is, like uh, he wanted, he wanted to. Sort of, um, Take, he wasn't a believer in NATO, was he? Now NATO is showing, I think, its force now and coming together, you know, with Biden mm. on board and all that stuff. And so, you know, I don't think Putin believed that NATO would get together and, yeah. and, and it, it joined attack back on him, and it's happened. Yeah. Now, if, if Trump was in there, it wouldn't have happened because Trump didn't, didn't, didn't believe in NATO. He, he blamed everyone for not spending enough. He wanted to take it apart and all this stuff. So, uh, yeah, but just what I'm saying, in, in, in life, have confidence in yourself, people, because the people at the top... Not all of them are geniuses. M- many of them not. They're just good talkers oh, and BS artists. Well, exactly. Yeah. But that uh, going back to the whole thing about lying and the truth. You know, in our own government, you know, lots of examples of that, and yeah. and people not knowing what they're doing, and it it is annoying. And then bring it back to investing. You know, you are trusting companies to be telling the truth, aren't you? You know, you t- you are hoping that they are and and everything we are putting their, with our faith in them so it, it, it but it's depressing when you've got leadership in the hierarchies of the world if you like that just are barefaced liars which yeah yeah and, and, and that so it's, it's, well, no, but, essentially hey. what it what it does though is in, in my mind sometimes yeah it it, it, it almost validates extreme behavior you know or lying so said you see some like trump or you see you know people done well in business many of them like you know they take big risks you know big yeah. risks uh, and that's oh, big risk, do risk is fine, but lying and fraud is no, thing. no, exactly. But but maybe with, with companies, I mean, you, you may say there's the odd dodgy, you know, CEO around. That that'll always happen. That'll always happen in society. You'll always get lies and, uh, uh, and fraudsters. Um, but at least you know, with you know, companies, it's it's legal documents there. You know, it's, they're, they're signed off. They're, all their reports and accounts are signed. Off. That's why you should always pretty much rely on you know accounts. And all that. of course, you can have one of a few CFOs. Like uh, in Patisserie Valerie, that's tucked yeah, away yeah. somewhere. Yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. that's what diversification is for, you know. It, that's why you shouldn't just have all your money in one stock. Because if that stock happens to be the one that, where the CFO is conducting fraud, then you're knackered. Yeah. And so, but you, the you know. but they go back to the Theranos uh, example, yeah. and that is an extreme example. But it is an example of the hype cycle around tech, around yeah. something. Yeah. And where you know the tech was fake, and it, it sort of. It, yeah. it, it's incredible the the, the, t- the the level of investor they got in and, and the people that were sitting on their board and all the rest of the people that believed the story that yeah. and that fuels the fuels the hype cycle doesn't it all based on lies all based on hype uh, all based on fraud and it's you know is it, it you kind of go yeah there's there's one or two cases in in aim listed stocks well, uh, they, you know, pro- they're a good in a sto- much smaller, smaller example yeah. but you know beware yeah. yeah yeah you've got to be careful you know, beware the storyteller, the CEO that's a good yeah. salesman. Absolutely yeah. be, beware. This, because, do you know what? In, I, I've just finished watching um, We Work. We Crash, sorry. Very good. Yeah, yeah. Steve, you watched that? Oh, Steve's gone. Uh, no, because I haven't got Apple TV. Oh, where, where are you, Steve? You're in, in, in a spacecraft. <laughs> I'm in a spacecraft. Yes, I'm on the, in a spacecraft on the way to work. 
Okay, cool. Um, I just said a while back, actually, if you have Apple TV and you're an investor, I highly recommend We Crashed. It shows you how important it is to pay attention to fundamentals, i.e. financial statements, not just the hype news released by the company or the guru at the top of the company. Now, when you buy into the story, and there's it, 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 several um, examples on We Crashed where, you know, it, oh, it's because of Adam. You know, the, the, the financials were knack- knackered. They were literally burning billions, you know? So they were turning over a lot, but they were burning a lot more all the time. And when it came down to, you know, fund managers saying, what's going on here? What's it? We're burning cash here. We're losing lots of money. He said, yeah, don't worry, Adam will, Adam's on top of that. Because Adam, the leader, everyone believed him because he's quite, you know, he's a good speaker, good salesman, and people believed him. Don't believe a salesman CEO, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. Just look at the company fundamentals. Do basic valuations on them because it's so easy to get caught up in the story. Cause people, love, people love a story. They're so powerful, aren't they, you know? And um, when you have a CEO coming on telling you it's going, you know, it's going to be uh, you know, huge. You know, we're going to be market leaders and all this. Stuff. Okay, maybe it will be, but just check that with the fundamentals. You know, it, is do, you know, do they have the news to support that? You know, that uplift and all that stuff. So um, it's 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 you know, just don't wholly believe in the again Elizabeth Holmes. You had big investors there, experienced investors, mm. just believing in her word. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, all right, it's not even working. The tech, <laughs> so it doesn't do what she says. Do you, it does. Think, you, could, do you think? What? Do you think you could have got sucked into the Theranos thing? No, um, it, I, I don't know. The level of it, it depends how close you were to her, I suppose. Um, you, you, you're being like Trump now. No, I wouldn't have got sucked in. No, no but the was... thing is, you always have to have. Whenever I look at a company now, I have. You know, that's why you set up quality filters every time. Yeah, you, you wouldn't have. How would you have known that tech wasn't real? Well, we're looking at my, yeah. Looking at, yeah, but looking at my strategy now, I wouldn't have invested in it. I think they've got no revenue, they've got no commercial, they, they've got no clinical trials or anything like that has been passed. Yeah, okay. So, they've, they, you know, the, the valuation is, is based on what? On Based on this tech, getting some commercial, no, so there's no sales there whatsoever. So, you know, there's, if you look at, I mean, the tech, med medtech I'm in is Polarian, but they have validation across over 100 peer-reviewed papers. Now, that is independent of them. That's not some BS that they, the, the company is, you know. So we, it's passed also clinical stage three trials twice, you know. Theranos didn't do any yeah. of that. They didn't have any of that. And the valuation was way, 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 way above where Polarian is. So that's nuts, isn't it? You think, okay... So we got independent validation on Polarian from the FDA, you know, from uh, yeah. clinical trials and from peer-reviewed papers. These are yeah. like Oxford, you know, Professor Gleason, Oxford University. Now he's not paid by Polarian; yeah. he's independent. No. You know? And there are a hundred other people like that, you know, in that field who validate the tech. It works. Yeah. It's spot on. Uh, uh, the other thing is that Theranos never went public, did they? So you couldn't have invested. But um, but the, the Polarian uh, is a good example of. Uh, not a non-bullshitting CEO. They do, they do very yeah, he little. He doesn't do anything. Richard, Richard, <laughs> Richard, they're, Richard they're, no. the, they're the polar opposite to that, aren't they? They don't do anything, and they don't really chat about it too much at all. And and so they and they don't do. Have, they're not full of BS. I don't think. Yeah, yeah. So, so whenever we release um, news of a player, I always email Richard or, or one of the guys from Vox. Actually, you know, so if I just come on. Um, not for this one. I think we'll wait a bit. And at the moment, I think he's a bit worried about you know, saying things during this sensitive process, the FDA going on. So I don't think he wants to say anything. Um, you know, but um, yeah, no, that's it. When, 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 you, when you have um, pretty much CEOs, and I've had it in the past, you know, I've, CEOs come to the podcast every week, you know, every week. And think, that's a, you know, a bit too promotional there, you know, or everything that goes out, every bit of news, they want to talk about it, you know. And I think, oh, you know, it's not that big a news. You shouldn't be sort of, um, and, and talking the big story, and, um, and and also you also get um, I've had CEOs uh, previously. Not I haven't had it for a while actually, but a couple previously have you know said to me off air, you know, suggested certain things. And I think what are you talking about? And I it, never trust a CEO like that ever, ever. You know, it's don't say anything, but it's a nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Oh, listen, listen. You know, and they say something, we're not recording you. <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> okay, listen, a couple of good, lots of news coming out. You know, we've got a lot of stuff happening. You know, they, what? But they won't tell you exactly what it is, but they'll allude to big things happening, you know. I said, never, ever trust a CEO like that. Never, never, ever, you know, uh, because proper professional CEOs do not do that, you know. The kind of people you want to invest in do not do that. 
You know, they're not like nudge, nudge, wink, wink. You know, we've got some good news coming up. You watch out. You know, that never happens, you know, ever. So, uh, yeah, so um, be careful of the... Of the over, you've got to have a bit of sales. It's, 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 well, well, I like it. It's not an exact science. You've got a bit of a salesy, you know, stuff in you, but not all sales, you know. It's going to ramp, t- t- turn it down a bit and uh, let the business... And finance, that's why you should always, re- you know, refer to sort of financial documents because hopefully there's less chance of them being manipulated than the actual story. Because um, that's that's the fail-safe, Steve, like Mr. Brown's, you know. That's the fail-safe right there, like Mr. Brown's curry powder. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, always check out the financials. Um, yeah. By the way, did you see that? I just was uh, I out hilarious this week. I, I read this. The, uh, Kellogg's taking the government to court over new rules that would prevent some cereals being prominently displayed in stores because of the high sugar content. So the government not allowing this now. And Kellogg's are taking the government to court because they said the rules fail to consider the nutritional value of milk added to the product. I thought, what? You don't make milk. You make high sugar cereals. Why are you saying that some other thing you add to it will make it a bit nicer, a bit more nutritional? That's absolute nonsense, isn't it? I did, I did put on Twitter. Yeah. I said, that's like tobacco company saying, hey, listen, hang on a sec. You were looking at fags on their own. People like to have a cup of tea with a fag, right? And tea is actually very good for you. Yeah. So let's get the fags back up there, advertise in prominent <laughs> positions, so we all like a cup of coffee and tea with our fag. I mean, that's nuts. And the product you are producing, Kellogg's, is not healthy. It's full of sugar. OK, if you add broccoli to it and something like that, it makes it better, but you don't make the broccoli. You know, so it's nuts, that, isn't it? Absolutely. And you see a company like that almost being dishonest. They're a massive brand trying to con kids into high sugar you know, food and pretending it's good for you. That there is dishonest, isn't it? You know? Yeah, absolutely. Dirty sods. <laughs> anyway, um I put a bit of money into my ice at this point. Say again? I put a bit of money into my ice uh, this week and invested a bit more into XPF factory. Yes. Uh, listen, I'm just looking at that. I just read we read that R and S you did. That's phenomenal. Let me just get it up there. People are talking about um, uh, growth, you know? Growth and value. Now, I did look at their, you know, a quick look at them. They'll be on um, this year, according to brokers, they'll be on 1.5 times sales. That's that's all. That's that's good value for money for the fastest growing leisure company. But when you look at this, they said, when they, when they, at the time of acquisition, right, they had one owner operated site. And six franchisee sites on Boom Battle Bars. This is not Escape Hunt, of course. Um, by the end of the year, they'll have 27. Mm. <laughs> that is phenomenal, isn't it? Unbelievable growth. I think the money coming from that. And, and, and I think, um, so they said they will have uh, 21 sites, six owner operated, um, um, and 15 franchisee sites, uh, further sites being built. But that's good because there's a nice level there between. You know, cash flow coming in from capital like model, which they don't have to spend any money on, um, the, the franchisees. And they've got, you know, of course, more capital, um, you know, expenditure on the owner operated, but they generate more cash, of course. But the margins, the EBITDA and margins on the franchisee side, it's like 75, 80%, you know, because they have to spend anything on them. So it's uh, 85%, so it's good. Uh, yeah, no, um, yeah, see, Steve, see, that's what I say. I was talking about, you know, my, my son's averaging in on a monthly basis. He'll do well in the end. If you're good companies, he'll do well. Like, you know, comp- all big companies are selling off at the moment. Amazon down 12%. They'll come back. It's fine. AWS is the thing, isn't it? That's where they earn their money, isn't it? Um, Amazon. First loss they've made since 2015. But mm. that was, uh, as, as Russ explained, that was a, a, a pretty much an accounting issue where... Um, the, they invest in Rivian, you know, Rivian electric, electric car maker. Uh, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it, of course, Rivian went crazy nuts uh, yeah. last year and has fallen back now. So it's, it's more like just the net asset value of that investment has gone down. So that's where the loss is coming from. But online's gone down. Sales like AWS is their cloud service. That's what makes the money, you know. If you, yeah. ask, if you ask people in the street, have you heard of Amazon? Yes. Yeah. Uh, have you heard of AWS? Not many people would know that, would they? They would say, no. That's where Amazon make their money. Really? Yes. Oh yes, yeah. What's, 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 I, I, I haven't seen. Uh, I haven't really followed the Rivian story, but wow, that's like seventy percent down year to date. Yeah, that's because they were valued at what? Yeah, oh, crazy, tens of billions, money. and yet yeah. they hadn't sold a car. They haven't got no. a car to sell. 
Uh, that, yeah. to me, yeah. says... And it's easy to look back now in retrospect and say, that was a bubble, of course. Um, yeah. yeah, because it was, like, loads of companies, wasn't it? I mean, there was... Um, that, no, back- but we, we said at the time that was ridicul- a ridiculous yeah. IPO, a ridiculous valuation. Mm. The froth. Yeah. The froth. All right, Steve. Steve's reversing. All right, Steve. That's, that's really good, Steve. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for the input there, Steve. That's, uh, no worries, no worries. It's like being on a podcast with R2-D2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's, yep. how's yep. C-3PO? Okay. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we should do that one week. Just have R2-D2 and <laughs> then Steve. <laughs> Rather than Steve. Steve couldn't make a decision. R2 do. Thanks, R2. Uh, well, yeah, what do you think the markets is with R2? Oh, yes. You're making more sense than Steve. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel about the markets. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. What else was news out today? Oh, the, so, so financial results from um, Space and People, which was, uh, yeah, I yep. saw that. Um, I did. And you did a video. Yeah, I did a video on that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, listen, like I said, even if even on one-time sales, they're, they're going to head in towards uh, profitable from 3.6 million loss last year to a yeah. 200k profit. That's a good turnaround. I've got a bit of faith in this. I, and I also now feel, feel there's more scale than I previously thought. Before, I thought, it's funny. You know, people, I've had people on the chat group saying, yeah, it may have got 100%, you know, in a short time, but where's the scale beyond that? I got sick. I said, 100%, is that not enough for you? It's like, how much return do you want in this market? This market's not giving you any return. So even 100%, but even beyond that now, I, if they do 100%, they're still on less than two times sales, right? Which is nuts. And, I, and that's on con- conservative sales of 20% growth. I think they're doing more than that because they're coming from a year where there's lockdown for the majority of the year, pretty much. In fact, from April, how many days is it? Uh, four months and two, six months. So six months a year they traded for pretty much, that's it. You know, proper trading because November, December was knackered because of Omicron. So I think they'll do comfortably over six million this year. Um, they'll be profitable. They've got uh, gross margins of seven percent. Um, that I mean, maybe down margins of twenty percent to come up to that. So uh, and they're going to reinstate the dividend. Nice. I think. You know what? Uh, do you see the, the the estate in Germany? Huge, huge estate there. So the potential to scale is quite good. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, GTC news on them. Uh, they yeah. started demolishing the Inverness. In fact, <laughs> they started demolishing in- Inverness Gasworks. That's what they're doing. <laughs> so they like vandals. Yay! <laughs> I saw that on that. Yeah. Yay! They so okay. vandal PLC. This is going to, yeah, we're, we're smashing this. Down. But of course, the uh, that's going to be a Hydro Hub, the, the SGN. Yeah. And yeah, it, uh, it was a funny RNS though, wasn't it? I, yeah. I just think, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. The, 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 they are pleased to announce the commencement of demolition works at the former yeah. SGN. We're just knocking it down, yeah. <laughs> it's a gas holder site. So they've they got the diggers in there knocking it down. And, um, <laughs> they've got the they Devonshire now, have they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, it was in with us. It was excellent. It was us. Oh, we're knocking it down. It's all rubbish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Just got the lads, lads in and just bash it up. Um, <laughs> bash it up. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. Uh, I mean, this company, of course, next year, I think we'll start seeing, uh, or maybe end of this year, start seeing some revenue from them. No, they must get some revenue from them because they're starting the process of energy. I don't know when revenue's kicking in here, but it's, it's one of these stocks. They've got you know, a, a base case business, which is fine, which underpins the valuation pretty much. And then we've got the upside of hydrogen green hubs here, which is, um, let's be honest, just, just, have you done that? Have you signed up for, you on Google, um, on Google Trends or whatever, no, is it Google News? Just sign up for green hydrogen. Look at the news that comes in on a daily basis. Massive inward investment. Like you've announced this week, one of the biggest green hydrogen hubs being done in Utah, I think, in the US. It's like every yeah. every week there's new groundbreaking news on green hydrogen. <laughs> Sorry, Steve, do you want to go on mute? I think you're at work now, working, and we're just listening to your work. Oh, sorry. I, I was only putting my coat on. Oh, my He's filming on. one of his adult films. We don't want to hear that, Steve. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to hear that. Yeah, give a, bit more lube, a bit more lube over here, please. He's yeah, chafing. Go on, that's I'll it. put myself on mute. Carry on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we try a different position now? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Lovely. Yeah, it's not, not enough nipple. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. Right. All right. Brilliant. Yeah. Mm. Uh, right, who's got the uh, the straps and the face mask? <laughs> yeah, no, not too tight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't breathe. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's inside. <laughs> no, that mask is inside, inside out. The, 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 the thing's supposed to stick out. It's not supposed to go in. 
Hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's yep. not. It's not a big inward nose. That's smoke that's going to stick out. Yeah. That big long thing hanging off the mask. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's it's like you're here. That's like yeah. uh, that's, that's like that guy's taking his blow up doll back to the shop. <laughs> back to the shop. Says, "Listen, excuse me. I, I just blew this blow up doll up, right? And it's it's got a concave chest and a, and a six inch willy. It says inside out, you fool. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Sorry. As you were. <laughs> right. <laughs> You got to invest in good products. Um, yeah, what exactly. else are we talking about? Anyway, um, GTA, yeah, that's going ahead. Um, what other news is there? Something else this week. There was news out. Um, I can't remember. Uh, True Finn. Oh, yeah, True Finn. True um, Finn. This is a very, the True Finn would not fit my, would not fit my filters you know, as yet. Um, but the good thing mm. is, for people who don't understand about True Finn, so the, the, the revenue went down by 10%. This is going to come from a. Um, Satarga is loaning on his own books. They do um, invoice loans, you know, for people and payment, and they pay people. Uh, when, 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 do you know what? When you think of it, we are, if we're having a tightening recession uh, and people are struggling, this Satargo software will come into its own. So to, to obviously get that Satargo going, they used to loan off their own book. They used to the, your, their own book to loan, you know? And, and with that... Steve, what are you doing? You're chainsaw out now? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of video is that? <laughs> It was a suitcase. Oh, it's a suitcase. Okay, so I changed some. Um, <laughs> that comes the doll. So, of course, when, you, when you're loaning on your book, the amounts you're loaning will be bigger, the revenue will be higher, but the margins are less. Now, they've gone now from... Obviously, the deal with Lloyds will mean that Lloyds will use their own loan book, which, of course, is massive, and yeah. Satago is a software as a service. Now, because of that, the revenue will go down, the margins will go up, and in time, that will grow. The growth will come from... The, 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 if you look at the, the brokers, they're, they're penning in around about 13 million, which just happened, got to 20 million this year. That's 54% growth. And after that, 78% growth beyond that. And that's because Playstack and Satago... Back end of this year, that's when the revenues will kick in. So they spent a lot of cash in 2021 because they're just doing you know, Satago development and all that stuff. But now is the time they start commercialising that. So that's why, at the moment, if you look at the, 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 the fundamentals of this company, so, well, that doesn't fit your filters. No, it doesn't as yet. But um, I'm, I'm hoping this year it will uh, it go beyond that way. You know, so the, the, growth is, the growth is stunning there. Um, like I said, 54% up from 13, on 30 million. And then it goes... Uh, so like 36 million a year after, um, hopefully. So, yeah, uh, stunning growth. Uh, hopefully going to speak to James on the podcast very mm-hmm. soon. Any other yeah. news, uh, news, and, uh, news and stuff there? Um, no, I don't think anything uh, uh, of my stocks, really. C4XD, you oh, know. you still got oh, that? Yeah, I still got that. That's in the fun corner, isn't it? Is there much fun going on? They did like... No, it- what you revenue know, did they do? 64? 60, 66 grand revenue? Yeah. <laughs> but hey, guys, hang in there. 75 million market cap. <laughs> hang in there, but, buddy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. A lo- uh, revenue, 66 grand. Uh, loss, 4.5 million. What are these? These are these are interims as well. Mm. So that's probably 9 million of, you know. Oh, oh bloody hell. What's Clive mm. doing there? They're doing anything. I, I, do you know what? I can't yeah. believe they, they haven't mm. stuck their remit there. They're going to be the most productive, you know, novel generation engine of all time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. drug discovery engine. Um, but they got 11 million in cash. So, yeah. you know, we, the, the wolf is a long way from the door. Well, when you think about it now, right, we are... Mm. When was this release? When were these up to... Up to uh, oh, six months mm. in January. So we've got three, yeah. three months of that so far. So let's say they're burning. Uh, let's say how much cash they use in operations. I was going to the cash flow statement. So you have this using operations here. Um, yeah, it's for no. So cash flow, um, cash outflow from operating activities, five point six million. Five. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about eleven million in a year. So they've got a year runway mm. from that, from the January, hopefully. Uh, but mm-hmm. when are they going to start mm-hmm. spinning out these things? Like, I, I, you know, I was literally they're, I know. They're chucking out a new drug every sort of week. Oh, every month. Yeah, well, yeah, just, yeah, wait, calm down, be patient. Yeah. Pa- yeah, for the patients. Yeah, yep. patient for the patients. Uh, there we are. But, um, no, I see that again. Oh, I'll sit out there. Um, but it, well, one of those things, they, they, it will spike up on a, on a good bit of news. Here. But if you're going to wait for that, it's, uh, again, consistency, isn't it? Just wait. Are you better just going for it's something that will rise steadily rather than hoping for the big up the day. Uh, yeah, am I better off taking C4XD and put it in space and uh, people now? 
I, I listen. I've spoken with Nancy, CEO of Space and People. I like what they're doing. I like where they're headed. Um, I, I, put it this way: if you look at your stocks, right, and think, what's the next company most likely to double? And look at yeah. the valuations and growth. You know, look at that. I mean, and this, you know, here's a little tip for you. Let's, let's, let's say you want to buy a car, all right? And you, the yeah. car is worth ten thousand pounds. Okay, and you, you got five grand, and you need to buy a car for work. It's not a flashy car. Just maybe a van. Get a bit of van. You can do a bit of work with a van, you know? Mm. Um, so you need 10 grand. So you got to find out, right, okay, sensibly, look at the companies you, you look at and think, and look at the valuations. So okay, that should be, you know, that's quite cheap, isn't it? You can turn all that right. money. They make it, and, they, and then think, which company is likely to double? Don't worry about the longer term scalability. And when you look at it like that, you realize the company that's likely to double will do so because it's undervalued and there's growth there. You know, pretty much right, it's, well, right now. Right. Where does the van come in? You want to buy a van, so you do a bit of work. You know, <laughs> what? when you got a van, you can always do a bit of work. You always do a bit of work going around. I've got a right. van with a van, yeah. Pete's got a van. Have you, Pete? Yeah. You couldn't help us out. Yeah, I'll chuck you a couple of quid, mate. Oh, lovely. Yeah, all right. Well, you still lost me on the analogy. I don't quite understand. Oh, no, so, so what I'm saying. Backing up the van, backing up the van to load up. No, no, no. So what I'm saying no. is, have a. For example, have a number in mind. What return do you want? When you've got, that's, doubling is quite extreme, I suppose. But what return are you happy with, you know? And work it backwards, saying, okay, can I get, like, because if, if you do 25% a year, for example, on equities, you'll be a very rich man in 20 years' time, you know, if you add money in it on a monthly basis and you end up. So if you actually look at companies and say, okay, how undervalued is this? How, how likely mm. is it, you know, to do 25% this year? Uh, based on fundamentals, you'll, you'll look at growth and value. That's what it'll come down to in the end. Because you can't say, oh, I think it'll do this, just double on this. This bit of news. You don't know that. You don't know it'll double on a bit of news. But you're better off looking at the, the fundamentals saying, okay, I think it's undervalued compared to other people uh, and uh, it's doing well, it's profitable. For, I mean, sp space and people can, can double and it wouldn't be overvalued. And that's how undervalued it is, I believe. You yeah. I know, no, that's the thing. And that, if you take Seaforex 75 million, you, you know, even on a... PE of, I mean, in that sector, you can have very high PEs, can't you? But I well, mean, they've got, they've, got, they've got no E. They've got all P, no E. There's no earnings. There. No, no, right. I don't know, but I'm just trying to. Too much like, PP, no, no E. No, but I'm just trying to forward think and kind of go, right, it would it, say it had, a, it was trading a PE of 30. Yeah, well, that's still like earnings of two and a half million or whatever. And, um, you know, but their, their revenue currently was 66, let alone earnings. But yeah, so. Uh, and yes. if, we, if we look at it, do, do we honestly, barring, say, another COVID incident where lockdowns happen, I don't believe that'll happen again because now we're all being vaccinated on a regular basis. We've all got sort of, uh, you know, things. Um, this is the way, you know, viruses work. They become less, don't they, uh, virulent as time goes on because we, we all become pretty much, we've all, we've all, there's, there's plenty of uh, variants out there. We've contracted ourselves. And we have immunity to it. So <coughs> they become less virulent as time goes on. So mm -hmm. barring that, if you look at sort of space and people, I do believe the retail sector now is probably in a two or three year. I mean, barring recessions and stuff, that doesn't really affect yeah. legends. Of, but I mean, I, I, I believe we're in a, a two year sort of, you know, buoyant market now for retail, leisure, and all that. We're bouncing back. And it'll recover for two, three years now before. And they're still undervalued in many stocks in this area. And I think they'll, they'll get back to their proper, you know, medium valuations. Over the next couple of years, you know, because let's be honest, yeah. people are getting back to normal. They may not go back to 2019, the pre pandemic levels, because people work from home. But um, people are always going to do, you know, go out shopping and stuff like that. It's not going to go down, I think, don't think. And in fact, if you've seen it, they say that, you know, a lot of brands use those experiences for their Instagram content, you know? So that's really part of their marketing strategy. Um, and and their re retail as well, in new businesses going into those areas. You know, they're, yeah. they're not going to take, take a long lease on a shop somewhere. You know, they're going to test out new products or the new companies want to test out, you know, in high footfall areas. And that's a very affordable way for them to do it, you know. Yeah. And if they become popular. I said, you know, I went to, you know, I said, when I went to Wales, Scotland, there's quite a few already. That was three months back, was that? But the, the, mm. in, the, the, in St. David's Centre, there was quite a few sort of retailers there doing really good business compared to the actual established shops. And um, they said they've seen unabated demand from pop-up retail. So these pop-up shops you put up for like, you know, a week or a month or whatever. Yeah. And they're now supplying that. They also, they, they said there's so much demand from it, we are going to be doing supplying staff as well. If you want staff, we can supply staff to help you out. 
So um, yeah. there's loads of men. So yeah, I, I like a lot. And just to look at it, grow, grow some value. For example, yeah. if you want to buy a, a million quid ass and you've got half a million quid, you think, right, I need to chuck half a million in that. I need to double somewhere, you know? Same with five grand, ten grand. All right, I need to put a five, five grand into something. I need to double. Um, swinging back, that's or or if you want a 30, you know, 50 percent gain, okay, I need seven and a half grand, I got five grand, I need you know 50 percent gain somewhere. Yeah, then you do the valuations. Okay, is that is that likely to happen? Yes, it is. So, I mean, I mean if you go portfolio value, Pete, and say, okay, mm. I want to be a millionaire in a year's time, yeah, um, oh, I'm, I'm five pounds away, yeah, we are. So, you need a re- just mm. five pound return, it's not a stretch. <laughs> If you've right, got like a uh, hundred grand, you think oh, I'm going to find yeah. a ten bagger somewhere and put it in one one stop. Yeah. That's a bit risky. So maybe you yeah. say, okay, let's see what I can get to next year. Can I, you know, can I? Uh, over, over, you know, if you do twenty percent over over four years, that's a doubling. Yeah. That's a doubling. You see? Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Just looking. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Food for thought, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, that's it. Pretty much We're done. Uh, okay. Steve, Steve's good. Like at work now. It's good to have Steve. Yeah, he, St- Steve's input today was excellent. Yeah, I thought that. Yeah, sound effects, uh, everything. Almost as good as R two D two. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, have you watched anything? Um, anything? Uh, uh, anything nice on TV? Uh, and what I'd recommend the dropout on Disney, but we've already talked about that. Yeah, yeah. that was a weird clip. You said her voice. She yes, manif- she manufactured that, didn't she? She, she had a higher voice, and so people weren't taking this seriously. So she started wearing Steve Jobs r- black roll necks and yeah. deepening her voice. Uh, Elizabeth. Oh, we got it. it's, it's, it's so fake, though. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Mm. When you when you yeah. when you tell you you did a double take and why are you talking like that? Yeah, yeah, um, really strange. Yeah, I, 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 and again, if you can if you can get access to We Crash, that's very good. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else? No, no, it's been all rubbish. So I didn't like the man, the canoe, and the thing. I mean, making something watching oh, yeah. you know the guy about the thing. I, I like yeah. the actor in that, but I think it was played for comedy, and it just I just couldn't. I didn't sit well. That, that's not very good. Ah, uh, okay. Did you see that? Yeah. No, I obviously know the story, but no, didn't watch that. Yeah, not good. Um, okay. So, but it is funny that the guy tried to defend yeah, his, 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 his death and told the kids, his missus told the yeah. kids, you know, dad's dead. <laughs> and he was next door, wasn't he? he <laughs> wow. No, your dad's dead, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. That's really bad, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, all right then. Uh, lovely, okay. sir. Yeah, 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 the Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. 